If you are hopeless in life, you feel hopeless. You've done everything you can do. There's only two actions. You can be passive and quit and just disappear. Or you can fight. Brian Flores said, it's who I am. I'm a fight. Black coaches are at wit's end. What can we do? We don't get opportunities. Take the New York Giants. Just this organization. Think about this. So the New York Giants, two coaches have really worked there. Parcells and Coughlin. When you tell me Brian Flores is rigid and tough, I laugh in your face. Parcells and Coughlin? The Giants, when they had Tom Coughlin, had to have private meetings regularly to tell him to tone it down. He was so intense. So Coughlin leaves, and they hire Ben McAdoo, who had never been a head coach. It is a disaster. They do it again. They hire a coach, Pat Shermer, who was a coordinator. It may have been worse. It was a disaster. They then hire Joe Judge, who'd never even been a coordinator. It was worse than the previous two. It was an utter disaster. So disaster, disaster, disaster. Wouldn't you think you would go, let's see. Let's go back to the thing that worked. Hire somebody who's been a head coach. And by the way, the soft, nice guy, the Shermer, that doesn't work. And there's this guy in Florida. He's winning with a bad owner, a bad roster, and a below-average quarterback, which is virtually impossible in the NFL. I'm not saying you had to hire Brian Flores, but you wouldn't even give him anything more than a sham interview proven by Bill Belichick's texts. Folks, he's from Brooklyn. He fits the Coughlin Parcells profile. He's from that Belichick tree, which appears to hold huge weight with the Giants. And he didn't get a legitimate interview. Coordinator, coordinator, Joe Judge. And you're really going to go back to the coordinator thing. And by the way, Brian Dayball may work. Colin, he made Josh Allen work. Never put Josh Allen and Daniel Jones in the same sentence. New rule on the show. It's Joy and I's fourth rule. Never put them in the same sentence. But you can put Daniel Jones in the same sentence with Tua. And he won with Tua. If you're a black coach, think about outside of yourself for a second. So Dennis Allen is probably going to get the Saints job. He's in-house. Dennis Allen was an utter disaster as a Raiders coach. Eight and 28. I am not against him getting another chance. I'm, I'm for young people failing, getting another chance. But um, Brian Flores couldn't get a legitimate interview. Josh McDaniels is going to get the Raiders job. He was 11-17. He admits, and again, I think he's going to succeed. I do think he'll work in Oakland. I think they're Vegas. They have players. They have Derek Carr. But he's getting a second job. <laughs> Brian Flores not only didn't fail – not only wasn't overwhelmed, he did virtually the impossible in the National Football League. Give me another example. Bad owner, bottom five quarterback, that's where Tua ranks, terrible roster, and back-to-back -back winning seasons. There's no comp for it. If you're a black coach, you can passively go into the night. Or you can fight. Um, those texts from Belichick to Flores are so humiliating, are so maddening. I mean, we know there's been racist owners. We know that. NBA had to get rid of one. We've seen multiple instances. But Brian Flores was on CBS this morning, and he was asked by Nate Burleson, former NFL player, great young broadcaster, uh, why, though he knew it was a sham interview with the Giants, he went ahead with the interview. Think about this. The hit rate on hiring head coaches. This morning I was talking to the staff and I'm like, what is it, 50%? <laughs> they laughed at me. It's like 7%.
make it. 7%. In the last five years, Vrabel was great. Uh, McVeigh's obviously been a home run. McDermott. Last five or six years, we've had a, a handful of hits. But Brian Flores, if not fired, is in that group because he had back-to-back winning seasons. And think about this. We now think Zach Taylor is a good coach. He's in the Super Bowl with Joe Burrow. Before he got Zach Taylor, Zach Taylor, before he got Burrow, he was 6-25. and 25. That's with two things that Flores had. Suboptimal ownership and a bad roster. Zach Taylor was six and twenty-five and one. Got a great quarterback and wins. Flores had the same bad ownership and the bad roster, never got a great quarterback, and still won. Zach Taylor was six and twenty-five. The best quarterback won every division. Brian Flores got in trouble for two reasons. Number one, he wouldn't take $100,000 checks to tank games. And number two, he knew you couldn't win at a a high level with his quarterback and fought for it. And to that, he got fired. Flores continued on CBS this morning about his lawsuit. So I'm not saying you had to hire Brian Flores, but you can't give me the excuse that he's rigid. Jim Harbaugh may get the Vikings job. Tom Coughlin was a success in New York. Rigid, it's the exception when you're not as a college coach or an NFL head coach. They're almost all rigid. They're almost my way or the highway. That's just the way it works. I mean, Bill Belichick wouldn't let his assistants talk for years. (laughs) Gronk, party Gronk, on more than one occasion, feared Belichick. That's how they rule by fear. And I'm not saying you had to hire Brian Flores. But as a Brooklyn kid with a winning record back-to-back in a division with the greatest coach ever in Josh Allen, a sham interview, you can either passively disappear into the night or you can fight. And that's what Brian Flores was meant to do. Let me talk briefly about Jim Harbaugh. He is now interviewing for the Minnesota Vikings job. Puts Michigan in a tough spot. I think Jim... Harbaugh has come to terms with he wants to get back into the NFL. Uh, For the record, he's been coaching there seven years. Four of those years, they won 10-plus games. He rebuilt the program. He also sees the reality, as did Brian Kelly. Brian Kelly's a really good football coach. 12 years, like Harbaugh, rebuilt a great northern brand. Years ago, when I grew up, Northern brands often dominated college football. Washington and Nebraska and Penn State, Notre Dame and Michigan. And then networks started putting all the games on TV, and kids thought, you know, I can stay closer to home, girlfriend, family. And then LSU became a power, and Clemson became a power again. And the SEC started dominating. Yeah, that's what happened with college football. It is harder now than ever to win when you have to leave your cold northern region to get your best players. And there's only two options. You can go join them in the SEC. That's what Brian Kelly did. Brian said, okay, I've played Georgia a couple times. I've played Alabama. (laughs) They have way more NFL bodies. I'm going to go join that conference. Or you can do what Harbaugh does. I want to go to a place where I'm not at a decided athletic advantage. In fact, I may have an advantage when I get to a Super Bowl or a playoff game. But Brian Kelly and Jim Harbaugh, in my opinion, are leaving for the same reason. Because they they have eyes. They can see that in the footprint of a Texas or a Georgia or an Alabama or even when they're rolling a USC, they have to ask players to go to northern cold weather climates because their regions don't have as many great NFL players. That's a fact. It's not an opinion. And there's only two solutions. If you want to win big, you go join them like Brian Kelly or you go to the NFL like Jim Harbaugh. And most coaches in northern powers just don't have those options. Most don't get offered NFL jobs like Harbaugh and most don't get offered the LSU job like Brian Kelly. But they both did their job. They did it exceedingly well. But both are realists. 
and I can appreciate that. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.